Good morning and win, 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 win and live forever. God bless you so much for tuning in one more time. I'm Timothy Profitable and uh, we thank God that we are alive and kicking this wonderful day. And we bless God for his love all through. Now, a friend sent me a video of uh, an interview that happened between Dauphin and uh, Bishop Abraham Simama. And I watched the video. Yes. Watch the video keenly because we had also done another episode before. I believe two episodes we did before to give us light in what is the association between uh, uh, Bishop Abraham Simama and prophetess Yinka, prophetess Anne. And we asked that question definitely. In fact, in that episode, we did not have a lot of things to deal with. We just asked the question and we asked the relationship between also uh, prophet, uh, I mean, uh, Bishop Abraham Simama and Squan. That's the end of the video. We did the episode and we ended it there. We didn't add much on it. We just ended it there. Now, coming out from this interview now, there are a lot of answers that we get by the questions we asked in the previous episode that was talking about Bishop Abraham Simama. Now, there must have been so much when you hear the video. If it's something to go by, then you have a lot of things that we can see, take, and find out what's happening. Now, I want us to watch that video because it looks like uh, uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua in his high wisdom with the family, I believe Mama Evelyn was also part of this and uh, with high wisdom in it, he most likely had planned the life after his departure for Prophetess Inca and Prophetess Anne together with <laughs> Bishop Abraham Simama. And uh, Prophetess Yinka being in uh, Malawi, Prophetess Anne being in Malawi is a language that most likely the initiative came from Abraham Simama that really talked at length of the secret they shared with Prophet T.B. Joshua. Well, I don't want to speak much about this and I want all of you to get the video, get the content and uh, I will really give it the best I can, the length I can. I believe this will be safe. The video will be loaded here so that you can see what happened and how the association comes in according to Bishop Abraham Simama explanation and in detail. And uh, we knew we used to have those wise men. Mm -hmm. Many he had his other five prophets. He was a man of vision who knew exactly what he's going to leave behind. He's spoken a lot of things there that I really need to also go through more and more. Even in this episode I'm doing now, I really need to go through it and really listen to it very well again and again. There must have been a lot that happened between Prophet T.B. Joshua and Abraham Simama. And uh, this one does not make everything different. Because if I see this interview, it all comes back to what we've been dealing with in so many other episodes that were down the line. Now, I want also you to watch this video within this point and uh, come to the comment section and tell us what you have passes without you talking to him and you come all the way from east africa to west africa to see him at least twice at least once or twice in a year so that means that there would have been some of the things that maybe he shared with you that maybe we are not aware and that it can give us uh, some insight yes there's a lot of things that this man shared to me uh, one of them was 
I don't know whether I should speak or not, but uh, I think I have to say. He, he said he has prepared people mm -hmm. for his ministry and he knows the ministry will live forever. And uh, we knew we used to have those wise men. Mm -hmm. Many had his other five prophets. He was a man of vision who knew exactly what he's going to leave behind. And uh, I remember the last trip I was in Nigeria. What year was this, sir? Yeah, that was uh, 2019. Okay. Just before COVID. Mm -hmm. 2019. And uh, we met him and uh, he gave me this, this, wow. this cross. Mm -hmm. And he said, he called me a name that uh, he has never called me that name before. He said, man of God, you need this oh. in your life. I feel so humbled to be called a man of God or the general of God. He said, I, I give you this. Please use it for the glory of God. I've been keeping this for the right person for the right time. Hmm. And I believe you are the right person now. You should take this. Wow. So I took it. I didn't understand that. I will mm -hmm. not see him again. But we've been talking to him, of course, several times during conversation. And then during the that time then COVID came in, I could not travel. Hmm. Uh, there were too many restrictions on traveling. And even the week that he passed on, I spoke to him on Thursday night. He called me along midnight. Um, 12 minutes. He likes calling at night. Mm. And he uh, spoke some other things that uh, maybe it's not for public, but one thing that I can put on public, he said, uh, Bishop, we need to pray more. Uh, God tell me the best. We might, for the first time, he spoke that word. You know, he's a mm. man of faith. Yeah. He's never doubted meeting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. He just said we'll meet by the mm -hmm. grace of God. But this time he said we might meet again wow you see so on that saturday night early in the morning on sun, sunday when i heard that he is going to be with the lord mm. i started recording those words mm. why this man said for the first time to me on that day that we might meet again it started now reflecting in my mind that maybe he was saying bye bye i really in my heart as a person and even my family. But we are still crying. But we are quite joy that he has finished the race. And he finished it very powerfully. And uh, I wish and I know we'll meet him by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. yes. Daddy gave everybody, when I said daddy, I mean Prophet C.B. Joshua, he gave everybody a sign that after he passed, they said, oh, could it be this was what he was talking about? So we are just going to be grateful to God that he gave us that sign, you know, and that we have that opportunity to even experience him closely, you know, unlike other people. So now you talked about driving yourself, but that's just one. What would you say you have learned being that close to Prophet Tibi Joshua? What would you say you have learned from him? I've learned one thing that it's all about Jesus and giving yourself, giving your time for Christ Jesus. And uh, that man, I don't know whether people they remember, we used to call him like, those years, mm. a man at the synagogue. Mm. Mm. Every time you find him busy at the church, that's one thing I learned, that you, you must commit yourself to the work of God. And I give glory to God that uh, we are imitating that lifestyle. Mm. Nobody can put himself on his shoes, you know. The shoes was too big, too huge for anybody to fit in. But we are trying our best to learn that life of harmonies. Mm -hmm. The greatest thing I saw to this man of God is harmonies. He humbled to, 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 to the end, to the down. Mm -hmm. You can't imagine. And one thing I also learned from him is giving. He was a man who gives, mm. you know. And uh, that's why in our ministry we believe in you are blessed to bless others. You know, we, we took it from him, we learned it from him that your life has got no meaning hmm. if it does not bring joy and happiness to other people. So we live here happy, but our happiness is nothing if other people are not happy. That's you know? true. So we need to make sure that as many people as possible, they enjoy that happiness also. 
that we enjoy. They enjoy the joy that we we have. So we link a lot. That is not about your happiness. Mm-hmm. It's what about other people? Mm-hmm. We need to balance the two more to others, less to ourselves. He, he lived by that example, and this is something that I've learned, and I trying to impact our people as well that uh, life is not all about you. Mm-hmm. It's about others as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is there any other thing you learned from him that you want us to know, or that's all that comes to mind now? Uh, one thing that I learned from him also is uh, nobody can do it alone. I can't do it alone, you mm. can't do it alone, that's but true. together we can stop Satan. So that's why I'm very close to those people who worked with Prophet T.B. Joshua. Mm-hmm. To me, I look at some of them as my own children, some of them are my own sisters, my mm-hmm. own brothers. Mm-hmm. We work together. Nobody can do it alone. We want to maintain that unity that that, that uh, the Prophet used to tell us, you know, that we should work together as a team. So when people, they see people from Nigeria coming to this church, they are not here coming as visitors. Mm-mm. They're coming home. That's good. They're coming to their own. This is their own baby. We created the thing together. So they are aware how it is started, how the mm-hmm. ministry started. Mm-hmm. So they're not going to a strange place. It's a place that they know. So I give glory to God. And then, man of God, I promised me before COVID, mm-hmm. last time that day. Some people will be coming here. <laughs> we delayed even to open this church mm-hmm. officially, mm-hmm. waiting for him to come and uh, send his people to come and open. Unfortunately, COVID came in and then. Oh, this church was opened what year exactly? A long, long time. But okay. Officially. We wanted okay. to make it an official. Oh. Uh, so, that what we wanted to do. And uh, we were waiting for that right time. But unfortunately, God told me the best. It didn't happen the way we wanted. But we are happy. What we were dreaming of is happening now. We Bishop, but he, he actually sent people. Yes, he did. He sent. Yes. Even though he was no more physically, yes, yes. he eventually sent prophetess yes. Yengan yes. An, yes. like he had said. We give glory to God. <laughs> and we are so happy with that. Yeah. And uh, people, they must understand. These are not the last time. Mm-hmm. They keep on coming and more people be coming. Amen. Because we are a team mm-hmm. that Prophet T.B. Yosho mentored. Mm-hmm. And all of us, we are one. We believe like a hand. It's just one is a this is a finger, mm-hmm. this finger, and another one, this finger, mm-hmm. another one, this finger. Mm-hmm. Another one. This how makes this what makes a hand. Yeah. So when they see me to theirs and they see them here, they should understand we are one, and we believe we we'll continue being together and standing for the glory of God. Amen. So it's not everybody that has the opportunity that you have. Clearly, we have been here for three weeks. We have fellowship with you for two Sundays. Only uh, two Sundays before the prophetess has finally arrived. And we had the event in the weekend that passed. We've seen that uh, the anointing that flowed in the man of God, is still flowing in the man of God, you have a portion from there. Is the same anointing that flows in you almost even the pattern of your prayers i was taking experience from some international visitors and they said even the way you deliver your message and you do your administration is almost like that thing now my question is that it's not everybody that had that opportunity that did not grow from synagogue that has that is anointing would you tell us how this come about i might have not stayed there but i want to assure you I was staying there. <laughs> <laughs> I was staying there. Why I'm saying this? Because this is the man that we've never passed a week without talking. Sometimes he will call me and tell me something that I cannot live in here. Say, pray for this. And we go back on Sunday next week, next Sunday service. You find it there. So this is what Dad was saying we should pray for. Mm-hmm. So he, he had a concern about us here. Yeah. And uh, I'm convinced hundred percent that uh, man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua, had a reason for this ministry. When we were constructing this ministry, he contributed hmm. on the construction of this temple. The temple we are sitting here, he contributed financially, yes, spiritually. He did, he did. financially, hmm. spiritually. He was doing it from day one, hmm. but I'm talking about financially as well. He contributed. Wow. to put this kind of structure 
you see. So to me, this is his church. Mm -hmm. If he built this church, how do you expect that anointing not to flow <laughs> in his own church? <laughs> <laughs> so the grace is sufficient mm -hmm. so we, we believe that for that reason that's why God has connected us together and uh, if, if if you've got a God or you've got a cow you will give birth to give birth to a cow mm -hmm. yes that's a true. God will give birth to a God mm -hmm. yeah so if I belong to that family mm -hmm. I should work like my dad yeah you understand mm -hmm. so i thank god that actually i'm proud mm -hmm. to see that grace flowing into this place you know and i pray that it will continue even after our lifetime amen the young people that we are mentoring now that grace should continue flowing it's all about jesus christ wow that's good so what would you say are the attributes characteristic of prophet tb joshua that stood up the most for you we know you talked about that, but what would you say stood out the most for you in all of his attributes and characteristics? Uh, his love for God, God work. It's just too much. Mm. That man invested everything to God. Everything to God. Mm. You know, every time I used to go to synagogue, every time you go, you find something new. Mm. Look at the house of God itself. Mm. It's so wonderful. Wonderfully made. Mm. And every time you come, you see some other changes. Mm, His thing. passion for God's work was just awesome. Mm. I pray, may God give me that grace too. That is my prayer. Okay. The That's passion it. for God. <laughs> we can say you have. Okay, what inspired? When we came in, we saw that literally this looks like another synagogue, though I understand that you said daddy built it. When I mean daddy, I said prophet T.B. Joshua literally built this place for you. But I will still ask because I know that maybe he was not there physically. He just sent some financial support like you have said. But we saw so many things that resemble synagogue in this church from the altar to the inscription I even have some of daddy's quotes which i'm going to i went around and i picked some of them which i'm just going to read from from this directly so uh you know uh prophet tb joshua synagogue church inscription was changing life changing the nation and changing the world yours is changing life changing people and changing the future then we have a uh, uh, jesus christ is still healing delivering and blessing we have he is the same yesterday today and forever and then um we have believing is our connection those are all prophet tb joshua's uh uh quotes that are inscripted all over the church you see that this unshakable faith in god brings unshakable victory in G christ jesus to mention but a few because we have a lot of them uh, I don't know. Uh, can you can you tell us? Because he was not here. He just sent his financial commitment. Yes, what? He was not here. Mm -hmm. But in spirit, we are one. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll speak one thing. Mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. There's a time I saw a vision, which I'll never forget. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came to me and he said, Bishop, thank you very much. I said, What is it? He said, For what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that was the time we were planning to bring these people together here. The mm. Whole group. Mm. He, he saw that vision as if I'm talking to his spirit. That he's really appreciating that we are able to bring the whole group together. Oh. You see, I woke up from vision and I said, Oh, Lord, thank you. Mm. My Lord is happy with this. Mm. I'm also happy. So, whatever you are seeing here, you are seeing what. This servant of God planted into my heart. Oh. He planted into my heart for over 30 years. Oh my God. What you are seeing now is just the fruits. Mm. The tree has grown up. Mm. Now it's bearing the fruits. And the fruits that will last. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for that grace. Yes. Amen. Okay, so um, your church name is Glorious Light yes. International Church. Can you tell us a little bit about this church? And what inspired the name Glorious the name Light Glorious. International Church? This comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter number 16. Okay. Uh, when the Lord spoke to me, He said, It will be my glory. Okay. My glory 
so people will see. Mm. And uh, it will be God, the glorious light, International Church. Why I put the light? Because Jesus said, I'm the light. Mm. So he comes with his light and mm -hmm. he takes all the glory. Uh -huh. He comes with his light, mm -hmm. but he is the light mm -hmm. and he takes all the glory. Mm -hmm. We don't share his glory. Mm -hmm. So that's why we call it Glorious Light International Church. So when you enter the way you have entered in this place, mm -hmm. the light of God will shine into your life and the Lord will take the glory. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Yes, so that's what happened to the name. That, that's why the name came in. Mm -hmm. And I'll come with my light because I'm the light of the world. Mm -hmm. And I'll take the glory. No man can take my glory. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we have come, like I said, we've seen a lot of miracles. We've seen the blind soul. We've seen the lame work. We've seen a lot of miracles that we cannot begin to talk about in this particular interview we've known that some people have received the impactation from daddy some people have received shit from the anointing but along the line they couldn't maintain it we have seen it over the years um this question is going to come you tell us how you have been able to maintain yours and then how do you think that men of god will be able to because we know that you have a lot of more challenges you're casting out demons they are going to fight back they are going to retaliate. So how can, do you think that men of God will best maintain this anointing? And if you can please tell us uh, your secret of maintaining it all this long. Maintaining the anointing of God is living the life that will please Christ himself. Hmm. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You cannot be a man of God if you don't fear God. You cannot fear God if you don't fear sin. God is holy. Mm -hmm. And uh, whoever wants to worship Him must worship Him in holiness. Mm -hmm. So the anointing of God it can only be kept through holiness. There are a lot of temptation that comes. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of pressure that will come. There are a lot of fighting that will come. But when there is holiness of God, it covers all evil things. One thing I believe, mm -hmm. you might have seen or put that quote in the church. Mm -hmm. Whoever hear more from people, hear less from God. Yeah. You see? Mm -hmm. The Lord spoke to me very clear that uh, let people talk. But for you, listen to what God is saying. A man of vision must be a man who is capable to hear what God is saying, even if everybody is against it. But if this is the will of God, mm -hmm. you must stand for it, even if it, it is or it forces you to die, you better die for it, because that's the will of God. Mm -hmm. God will sometimes is contrary to what man will is. Mm -hmm. That's where the problem is. One thing I've learned is that saving God is to be ready facing challenges. Because every person, every time you see somebody being delivered in the ministry, one thing you should know, it means a demon was there. Mm -hmm. It means the devil was there. Mm -hmm. Every time you see somebody being healed, that should tell you, it means sickness was there. Mm -hmm. So when somebody is being healed, that sickness is a spirit. It's moving around, it's going somewhere. Mm -hmm. It will go and enter to somebody. When the Lord Jesus, in the book of Luke, in the book of Mark, he delivered that man who was possessed with demons. Mm -hmm. Yes, who are you saying? We are many. Mm -hmm. They didn't even mention their names. Mm -hmm. When he allowed them, he commanded them to leave. Mm -hmm. They said, Allow us to enter into those pigs. And then they went and entered into the water. They remain in the territory. Mm. They left the man, but they remain in the territory waiting for the right direction to enter again. Mm. <laughs> but Jesus said, Come out and never come back to this person. Mm. The man was delivered, mm. but the demons refused to leave the area. 
So I believe one thing that as we are seeing this deliverance, this healing, mm. there's no mean in this world there will be no more demons, there will be no more sicknesses, mm. they will still be around. Because the devil was cast out to come into this world. Mm. So there will be those problems there. So only holiness will keep us safe and keep us moving, mm. saving God for the glory of God. So the grace to keep that thing is to remain faithful and genuine servant of God. Mm -hmm. Serving God from your heart. Okay. That's the secret. Thank you then for revealing that to us. We hope that God will give us grace to maintain that. As we round up, um, apart from Chisomo, uh, we hear that before the church rounds. You, what do you think is happening there, here and there? And uh, there are a lot I'm coming with also in the next episode uh, towards the same. We will discuss this in two episodes that we'll be following. So go there in this video and see what we have. Timothy Profitable, and this is Blevoy TV. We handle your spirituality, economic, and social matters. <laughs>